Good mor morning, Brian and Becky. Good to see you guys. Let me open up this thing here. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up chapter six today. And that means only one thing. Our test is coming up, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think then on Thursday, we'll take our test. And I, if, if it's like it was before, and I haven't double checked it, because I programmed that all at the beginning, beginning of the semester, <clears throat> you, it's, it's available on Thursday, and you can finish it uh, on, by Friday. But I can double check that. You should, too. But it's definitely coming up. <clears throat> okay, we're going to uh, end chapter six with a discussion of internal control. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen. Okay, well, what is internal control? <clears throat> internal control uh, is policies and procedures that manage, managers use to protect assets, uh, ensure reliable accounting. And uh, what, what, what do I mean by that? We're trying to minimize unintentional errors, like, like mistakes, like you transpose something or you forgot to do something, we'll catch it. <clears throat> but also uh, intentional irregularities. And what I mean by that, we're talking about people that are trying to embezzle from you and do and uh, commit fraud. And our procedures will help protect that uh, from happening. Can the internal control procedures be circumvented? Certainly, especially when you have a, a, a bunch of bad actors that are working to, together and colluding together. But nevertheless, it does um, I help with, with many uh, uh, cases of uh, embezzlement and fraud. Matter of fact, I'll be talking about ways that uh, you know your employees may try to embezzle from you and how we stop it. Also, it helps uh, uh, urge in adherence to company policies, right? And also to conform to laws and regulations. <clears throat> and finally, good internal control system promotes efficient operations. Now, we're, we're gonna be discussing uh, seven of them. Now, I said to write this down. What you can do is you don't have to write frantically now. I'm going to go through each one. So maybe as we talk about them, write it down and, and maybe write down the example that I give. Okay. So let's start out with uh, establish responsibilities. <clears throat> the, the principle behind establish responsibilities is that Control is most effective when only one person is responsible for a given task. <clears throat> and the classic example of established responsibilities is the single cashier responsible for a single cash register, right? So when, when you uh, assign a cashier uh, to a register, that one cashier uh, is the only one that can get into that register. Of course, the supervisor can, can override everything. And you've probably seen that in action when a cashier will call a manager over and they'll have to fix something, but only one cashier per register. So if something goes wrong, like cash comes up missing or whatever, it's that cashier. Why? That cashier is the only one that had access to that cash register. Can you imagine if you had more than one cashier on a register? Let's say you had two cashiers on a register. Well, now money's missing. Who did it? Cashier A or cashier B? You wouldn't know. So anyway, establish responsibilities. One person responsible for a given task. <clears throat> Number two is maintain adequate records. And part of that is documentation procedures. So um, how do we control some of our records? Well, we will uh, 
assign checks, check numbers. Check number one, two, three, four, five. And uh, uh, I don't know, mo you young folks might not even have real checks anymore. Um, uh, although I do, and I write maybe three or four a, a month, but my checks are pre-printed and they have a number. So when they come back in, I can tell if one is missing or ha one hasn't cleared the bank, right? So if, if I have check one, two, three, five, six, well, what happened to four? I don't see it on the, the bank statement. And then I know then that the check number four is still out. And the only reason why I would know that is because it's pre-numbered and I'm missing that number. Um, invoices are the same way. You know, you can only have one invoice number and, and you, you can account for all those invoices, right? Next one is insure assets and bond key employees. Well, you know, as far as insuring the assets, let's say you're in the warehouse and you have insurance policy just in case there's a fire or something and you lose that, that uh, the contents in your, uh, your warehouse. Uh, well, it's, it's covered. So you, you protect your assets through insurance coverage. Another way is to bond key employees. Now, what I mean by bonding um, is uh, you will hire an insurance company to check out your employee before you hire them, probably. Check, it, check them out. Then, and they will, the insurance company will check their background. Do they have any felonies? Uh, uh, anything, do they have any bankruptcies? Anything that could cause some problems uh, uh, for them working with you? So they may, they may not be reliable or, you know, they may want to rip you off. Well, anyway... The, the uh, insurance company will come back and says, oh, no, this employee is clean. You can hire him. And so based upon that, you'll hire him. Now, what happens if that employee decides to rip you off anyway? Well, then that insurance company is on the hook because they, they told you that he was okay. And so that's part of an ins like insurance policy. Okay. Uh, another one to uh, ensure uh, uh, protection of your assets is to rotate employees and require vacations. You know, if you have a uh, employee said, you know what, I've got so much work to do and I am so loyal to your company that uh, I don't wanna take a vacation. I just wanna keep working because I'm really into this. Well, that might be the case, but it could be that that employee is committing fraud. And if he takes a vacation and when somebody else comes and fills in for him, uh, they're going to find him out. So what you need to do says, no, 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 no. Um, you have to go on vacation, right? Or you can rotate the duties, okay? <clears throat> uh, there's a... a, a in Canvas, I have uh, these videos that I prepared, and it tells all about these and gives examples of these, of how uh, people and employees have really ripped off businesses. One of them here was when the, like a hotel manager and the head of housekeeping uh, colluded together. Uh, basically, what would happen is the manager in the front desk would take a room uh, off, offline uh, so no, you know, nobody on the on the records. It, it's offline because it was it, it was being maintained somehow, being fixed or whatever. But then then what what they would do, uh, the manager and the housekeeper would actually book a guest into that room. And they take their money, and when when the guest was done, the the um, head of housekeeping would go in and clean up after it so that the business wasn't even wise to it. So they kept the money. Well, how did they get uh, find out about that? Well, one of them got sick. Somebody came in and it, they were caught, right? And of course, con uh, conduct background checks, kind of like the, almost like the bonding the key employees. Number four, <clears throat> separate record keeping from custody of assets. 
the classic one is uh, those who keep the books should not hold the assets. So remember like in that um, uh, publisher PowerPoint slide where it said the cashier is gonna create the journal entry? Well, unless they miss something else, but the, the cashier is not supposed to create the journal entry because the cashier has control of the cash. <clears throat> Anybody has control of the cash should not be allowed to uh, control the books, okay? Because you could do all kinds of funny things. Um, one of the uh, ways that my friend got uh, uh, in trouble, and he his his employee embezzled like twenty thousand um, dollars. Matter of fact, let me tell you the story about this. It it's it'll boggle your mind. Okay, I'm teaching counting 4A, right? And I'm teaching this, but I noticed that a, a certain student, all of a sudden, she, she was a good student, just quit coming to class. Okay, well, I didn't think a thing of it. Well, my friend said that, hey, uh, Richard, do you have any good uh, accounting students? I need a, a bookkeeper and I'd like to hire one from you. He said, well, I've got plenty of them. They're really good and I can, yeah, I can do that for you. And, when, and I did. But I said, well, what happened to the other one? Well, uh, she embezzled from me. Really? And guess what? It was my 4A student. Uh, she was actually embezzling. And so, you know, uh, she was going to go to uh, Penn State, but now she's in the state pen. <laughs> kind of a little counting humor there. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, what, 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 if, what you can do... Um, well, even, even uh, uh, well, this is what this woman did. She would create uh, fictitious um, uh, invoices. And then she would, and so she entered the, the liabilities in the system. And then she would pay, pay that invoice. And that, that amount was going to a Swiss bank account or something. Anyway, uh, that's how she did it. Okay. So anyway, if you, if the record keeper should not have physical custody of the assets and definitely should not be able to, to write the checks. <laughs> definitely not. Okay. Uh, number five, <clears throat> divide responsibility for related transactions. Uh, related duties should be assigned to different individuals, ordering, receiving, paying for, and recording purchases should, should be done by uh, different employees. I kind of kind of learned this one uh, by the, the 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 words segregation of duties. Okay, so um, but any anything in that process of that, that transaction, they they need to be done by different pe people. Who uh, somebody uh, special should order it. Uh, the receiving department should receive it. Somebody else is paying for it. And then, of course, the accounting department is going to be recording it, right? So uh, in uh, those short videos that's in Canvas, you know, you just hit a link, it goes to YouTube. Um, they talk about this, uh, this dean uh, of a college. And he, he, would, he could order a receive and... Um, uh, and submit for payment um, uh, the transactions under a certain dollar amount. So what he would do, he would order, receive, and he'd receive the invoice. And it was a personal item. It wasn't for the college. And he'd, what he would do, he would swap out the, the invoice to make it look more like it was supposed to be for the college. And he could do that because he was, he was doing all parts of the transactions. So uh, of course he got caught, but, uh, if if he couldn't order, let's say that he could requisition it, but the purchasing department had to, to uh, uh, order it, he would not be able to do it. Or if he didn't receive it, then uh, the receiving department should receive it, right? And uh, uh, as far as uh, paying paying for it and the and receiving the invoice and paying for it, well, the invoice should have probably went to accounts receivable or, or accounts payable. Uh, in the accounting department, and it should not have been the preview of the uh, that dean, because if if the dean had had uh, the authority and to do all the transaction, he could manipulate things. So, anyway, uh, in that process, 
uh, people, sh you have segregation of duties. So it breaks it up. So not only, not only just one person is responsible for the whole, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? The sequence of, of the transaction. Okay. Also, uh, we apply technological controls. Physical controls, we like safes. Yeah, I mean, you know, you would, uh, any cash you'd put in there, you, you would also like put in checks, pre-printed checks. You want to lock them up because you don't want people to have access to it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, time clocks. This is kind of old school, but um, that's really to help, uh, you know, be able to make sure that, you know, the employees aren't uh, putting hours that they're not working. You know, they're getting really slick now. I don't know if I want to do this, but like in, in Switzerland or something, they're actually in, in embedding a, a chip in, inside your skin. Uh, that sounds too biblical to me. I don't know. In Revelations, I'm not sure I'd want to do that. But I mean, you can open doors with it, you know, uh, secure doors. You can go to lunchroom and you can buy your lunch. And instead of paying for it, you just scan the backside of your hand um, and you check in and check out uh, that type of thing. So that that's it. It's available. Sounds kind of scary to me, but it is a, a, a control. I like this one. I wanted you guys to have this one. We go face to face. I want eyeball scan. You know how I have to do uh, attendance, you know, and you, you come in and I'll, I'll have you sign in. And uh, you guys don't know that because you're online, online, but that's how I do it. I don't take attendance per se. I'll pass around the sheet and you, you, you give me your signature. But that's kind of a bogus too. Sometimes I've, I've had students actually forge the, the, um, their friend's signature. Not good. Don't try to do that on me. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a student advocate, but I don't like to be scammed, you know, but most of the time that doesn't happen, but Hey, you would have a hard time, uh, you know, faking an eyeball scan. So you'd go in and they do the eyeball scan and register that you're here. I like that. Isn't that weird that they can do that? <laughs> and then you, of course you guys know about, uh, the garment sensors, right. To deter theft. I mean, uh, uh, when you go up to like, I don't know, was it the target? Did they, they do that or JC Penny? I don't know. Anyway, I, I know that that uh, certain stores do that, where that if you walk out the door without paying and that, that garment sensors on there, it's going to trip an alarm. So that's another technological uh, control. And finally, uh, I think it's finally number seven. I think this is that the last one is that uh, you, you need to perform regular and independent reviews. Okay, <clears throat> so what does that mean? Records uh, periodically verified by uh, an employee who is independent, okay? And discrep discrepancies are reported to management. Let me show you an idea uh, about this. Remember when I said that, you know, the, the cashier, you know, who has the cash should not maintain the books? Right. So that's so this is what it is. You have the cashier handling the cash, making the, um, the deposits and all that. But the records of that are sent uh, to the uh, uh, accounting department. Right. And so um, at a certain time, this like the assistant uh, treasurer is going to make monthly comparisons and uh, uh, report unreconcilable unre differences to the treasurer. So what, what the books say was should have been, been deposited because they've got like ca ca independent cash, uh, uh, cash reports and what was actually deposited by the cashier, they've got to line up and it's verified by an independent person. Okay, so that's uh, independent, independent internal verification by somebody outside the, the, the system. Okay. All right. So what I'd like to do is to um, see if you could apply these in a basic way. Okay. So I'm going to stop. The show. What do I need to stop the show? No, I'll just do this. I'll do in the slideshow. And then I've got this one. And I think, there we go. Hey, there you go. All right. 
now I know there's only two, two of you here, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to tell me which of these seven principles apply. So here we go. Two cashiers share the same cash register. This is a violation of what control? Anybody have any idea? You could put, I guess you could put it in the chat. Wouldn't it be established responsibilities? You think you're right, let's say. Yes, you are correct. Perfect, thank you. Nice, nicely played. Okay. You know, I have all this on um, on uh, 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 Kahoot, but since there's only two, two of us, I think, or two of you and one of me, I said, well, we'll do it this way. All right, next one. Pre-numbering checks and invoices is prescribed by what control? What do you think? Uh, Time's up. Maintain adequate records, right? <clears throat> you can really control your checks and invoices when you, when you pre-number them. Remember that example when I said your checks are pre-numbered. So you know that you have, you, you look at your bank statement, checks one, two, three, five, six, come in. Well, where's four? We know that four is missing because we've accounted for all of them and they're numbered and we can see that check four is still outstanding. We can do that because the checks are pre-numbered. And it's the same thing with invoices, right? We, we can control them and know what, what, where we're at and everything. So it, anyway, it's part of maintain adequate records. Okay, now we went over this uh, last time. When cash receipts arrive by mail, how many people must be in the mail room opening the mail? It's not really what control, this is just, you know, a number. Is it one, two, three, four, five? One. Oh, it's two. <laughs> that's good. You know, the reason why I say, well, Tetra, that's not good, I missed it. Well, the thing is, I think it might be a test question. So you missed it now, but that, this doesn't count, but on the test it does. So now I guarantee you, you know that two, uh, two people is the answer. And why is that? If you have one person in the mail room opening the mail and they're opening cash, they're going to open it up. One person is going to look around, to pick that and put it in their pocket and then write the cash down. And nobody would, would know anything about that, right? But if you have two people there, I mean, the only way that this control would be circumvented is if both of them are dirty and are, are thieves and they collude together. But most of the time, you know, there only be one. And, and if there's two of them there, they're not going to do that. So two is the right answer. It, it keeps them uh, held accountable. Okay. Nice. Well, I see in the, uh, the, ch uh, the chat, yes, probably about the test. I could double check that, but I think our test is going to be on, our five, six test is going to be on Thursday. It's available on Thursday, for, and it's going to be open for like 48 hours, and you can take it until Friday. I can double check that. Matter of fact, I guess I can give you a reminder of that on the announcement. All right, let's do the next one here. Um, <clears throat> what control will not allow the same person to order, receive, and pay for goods? This one's a little bit more tricky, I think. Uh, divide responsibility for related transactions. That is correct. Yeah. Remember, that's the uh, the college dean who, who can order, receive, and, and actually they even receive the invoice and, uh, and he bought his own stuff. And then he, he did, swapped out the invoice to the, to, so the accounting department or the cashier will pay it, you know. Um, but if he, he, if he didn't, wasn't responsible for every step of the way, I mean, there was somebody else ordering it, 
somebody else receiving it, uh, somebody else paying for it, uh, he probably wouldn't be able to do that. Okay. Okay. Bookkeepers should not have custody of actual cash. This is an application of what control? Uh, time's up. <laughs> you like my sound effects? Yeah, separate record keeping from custody of assets. So those folks that actually have possession of the cash or the checkbook, right? Then they should not be uh, uh, recording the transactions. The accounting department should not have, have access to the physical cash. Can you, like you say, like, like what happened to my, my buddy, you know, it's a, he's at a small business, and so his bookkeeper was also paying the bills, which is not good. She kept the, 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 the uh, accounting records and had custody of the assets and, and, and control of the checkbook. No way he should have done that. He should have, even if it were a small business, he, he's the owner. Him and his wife should have kept that, the checkbook. And then when he saw the invoice, looked, looked at it and go, what the heck is that? And then kind of follow up on it but what happens is that his bookkeeper would would actually because she's in the she's the record keeper she created this fake invoice and then she paid this fake invoice it was just i mean it was just embezzlement waiting to happen but if the the record keeper if the bookkeeper or the accountant doesn't have access to the checkbook or the cash that wouldn't that wouldn't have happened Using passwords to access company computers is an application of what control? It would be technological controls. That is correct. Apply technological controls. Yeah, I also, I don't know why, I, I like the eyeball scanner. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm going to re probably re be retiring within maybe four years. I don't think it's ever going to happen, but maybe I should, I should, uh, you know, when we have the, these uh, grants and stuff, I should write a grant. Yeah, I want, I want an eyeball scanner that, as a technological control. <laughs> I don't like that. That's just kind of blows my mind. Is it something like you'd see on one of those uh, spy shows or something? This is interesting. The use of internal auditors is an application of what control? You may not even know what an what an auditor is or an internal auditor. What do you think it would be? Well, let me give this one to you. This was a tougher one. <clears throat> the use of an internal auditor um, is an application of perform regular and independent reviews. <clears throat> what happens is. In a larger organization, internal auditors, which they're not like me, you know, like like a CPA, we're we're uh, from the outside, and we do some of the functions of uh, internal auditor. But we they, businesses sometimes have dedicated internal auditors, especially I, I know they do for sure at banks, and they're looking for procedural things like like um, were the ex expenditures approved. I mean, you have a, a system and they say that for good accounting control, all expenditures have to be approved by somebody like a supervisor. Okay. So what the internal auditor will do is actually go in and say, okay, I see this expenditure. Show me the signature of the supervisor that authorized that. And so they'd have to go back and they have to show them, well, here it is. Okay. Or it, it, it's not. Well, then the, the internal auditor says, "Hey, look, you're not you're not following the procedures, right?" So that's some of the things that that um, internal auditor would do. Okay. All right. 
And that's the end of that. All right. So I can stop the share. So um, I don't know. There's only two of us. So I, I, I know that I have some good uh, 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 cahoots, but I don't know. It's not as fun when we only have two. So maybe I should just share with you um, what, you know, the study guides and stuff that you can review for, for, the, for the test. So let me see if I can. Uh, do this in show. Okay. Okay, let me see if I can uh, call this up and uh, show you. Give me a second here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and share it with the screen here. Okay, so I guess you, you can see that. So under here, we have, we have some st uh, study guides. And, uh, you know, I give you the, the, the study guide that you can work the problems. And uh, also, I have a solution here so you can check it. So let's just take a look at this one. Oh, here we go. So I just give you uh, some problems, right? And uh, matter of fact, some of these I think we may have done uh, during the uh, lesson, you know, during our last lesson and things, like Jason's bait shop, okay? But I have this, and then I have, of course, the solution to it, if you wanted to see that, Let's see? So here's all the solutions, and uh, yeah, and even even for the um, how how we would do a you know the perpetual inventory, and that's these are the solutions to the problem. So you can kind of review that. Now uh, Brian kind of left us too early. I hope he knows this, but I believe that uh, your your big problem that's on the test is going to be a bank, bank re reconciliation. So knowing, knowing like Jason's bait shop and, and also your homework uh, uh, would be really good to review because you're going to be doing a bank rec. Matter of fact, uh, um, your bank rec that you're going to do would be very similar to one of your homework problems. Okay. So we may want to review that. All right. Okay. Is there any questions about that? not i'm gonna stop the share i think that should do it for us i know gosh we, we got done in 35 minutes but there's no need to keep keep going on it but i think uh uh you can review those those uh solutions work the problems review the solutions and the like okay is there anything else that you want to uh talk about or anything okay what i'm going to do then is i'll uh, double check but i'm sure that i have made available the test on Thursday, and you can take it Thursday or Friday. Okay. All right. You have a good day. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. bye.